Due to Caviar Key's increasing coastal exposure, storms that had a minor impact three decades ago caused significant flooding today. century America, turtle frolics were popular gatherings where guests ate turtle stew and perpetuated the institution of slavery.
Atlantic spades are also known as ocean cobblers, pot covers, sea donkeys, jackasses, and other names they find incredibly offensive. Given the number of people who frequent the beach, it can be rationally assumed that a little human urine finds its way into the sea. To see this area is to witness the inability of the hydrosphere to support the growth of humanized landscapes along the Gulf. Shockingly, this was only Alex's second worst birthday.
frozen herring at Fish Fingers, Casanita just wants her favorite comfort food, raw shark liver. The accelerating destruction of the Gulf has occurred in tandem with a wholly humanized view of progress and development. Caviar Key provides a scenic setting for humanity's destructive impact on the natural world. In the kill-or-be-killed world of the sea, performance-enhancing mutagens provide benefits that could mean the difference between life and death. The white and black attack. The orc. Once the featured attraction at marine mammal parks now have a new favorite trip, killing things. Man has succeeded in hurting or eliminating most of our land-based threats. But how will we respond when the beasts of the sea come for us? Putting sharks in their place, hunters ensure they'll stay in their lane, so we don't have a Planet of the Apes situation on our hands. I catch three of them killer whales, they got their fish fingers. You could say I got a real keen eye for talent. Although, the wheelers really gotta work on those side areas. Prosperity Sands reminds us that sometimes the construction of second and third homes supersedes considerations like loss of species diversity. The 
grotto provides a brief respite from the Sturm und Drang of the Gulf. Quasi-legal, get-rich-quick schemes set aside for now, the shark hunters get to work. Blanchard County's 78-mile coastline, there are 35 miles of sandy beach, only six of which aren't owned by resorts, individuals, or homeowners associations. Tail alone can draw blood. That used to scare, yeah. But they don't give you no scholarships when you're in no big air rail jam. Shark Hunt draws to a close. found near waterfalls, so this is a mundane sight hardly worth remarking.
fever has seized Port Clovis, making it dangerous for anything that swims. A death like this can bring a tangible sense of panic to a coastal town. Biological adaptation allows the bull to survive in fresh water. Quiet space is the ideal stage for the shark to meditate and harness her pure potentiality. Can't avoid 
us forever. Port Clovis has grown bored of the hunt, leaving our shark to fight another day. Concentrations of metals and hydrocarbons in the water show just how much the Gulf has progressed since Amerigo Vespucci first arrived here in 1497. Coastal erosion currently impacts over 70% of the globe's sandy beach environments. The shark returns to the grotto to focus on personal transformation. because of these oil tankers spinning. But it brings a lot of money into the economy. Can't argue with that. Let's roll out.
simply to close the beaches. But why do that? You can just set loose a gang of amphetamine-fueled locals with guns. An insatiable fish. The bull shark is nine-tenths active. when he was a teenager. This museum's the first place I took him after when he got certified. staircases and a mosaic swimming pool, the Chatelaine is still only Port Clovis's second most ostentatious yacht. attention spans are short. They've already forgotten about the shark and the many crimes, so thus ends the bounty.
whale needs to eat over a ton of food every day, which here in the Gulf mostly consists of hammerhead sharks. Sends their students out here every summer to study the reefs. Nah, shit. Guess we all got different ideas about summer fun, yeah? Successful shot for the people of Port Clovis.
those sewer lines need work. I've had campylobacteriosis, cryptosporidiosis, leptospirosis. Let me tell you, partner, that ain't no joke. has forgotten all about its road show. Pier 1's Bird Dog Grill is famous for its endless platter challenge, featuring a dozen oysters, one full rack of ribs, six sausage links, half a barbecue chicken, and 25 spicy wings. Hunters are on the water bringing their explosives and poor impulse control with them. The powers of society have retaliated with deterrent action, but mankind is ultimately impotent to stop Mother Nature's vengeance.
bull shark is an animal of broad dietary proclivities. This shark is a sort of super scavenger, completely lacking in what may be called dietary discrimination. Sometimes use the ocean surface to trap it.
hatred of wildlife in their hearts. Not more so than the shark. But the war goes on.
The cetacean assassin, the sperm whale. The world practically ran on sperm whale oil. Now we can only watch them from a farm, dreaming of tapping their skulls for all that sweet spermaceti. Quiet space is the ideal stage for the shark to meditate and harness her pure potentiality. Coastal risk analysis reveals that someday, someone here is going to get a sizable check from the National Flood Insurance Program.
The sea wolf remains acutely aware of anything that might constitute food. No one knows who built this mysterious underwater base, but odds are they probably own a Nehru jacket and a Persian cat. Running a diving expedition every year for ten years, and I ain't found it yet. Let's get out. This is quite a find. Although that depends on the gold market, which has really been underperforming lately. I blame the Fed, of course, but what can you do? The idea that shorelines belong to the public comes from Roman Emperor Justinian, but only because he wasn't able to consult with the Association of Resort Developers eternally wise lobbyists. As we face impending resource scarcity and declining living standards, it's nice to know that in the meantime there's still a place to get a good bamboo fusion massage. The hunt is over, and there will be an inevitable rush on dollar drafts at Flamingo Joe's. Though so our bull shark is unaware, the noose around its neck tightens thanks to a crack team of sharks. Some sharks are scavengers, indiscriminately consuming anything that's vaguely edible.
The human is speedily torn to pieces and eaten. The Toast of the Coast, Lieutenant Shannon Sims. Yes! Cider! Her. It's really been sprouting up these past few years. Some of my own money in this. It'll be a laser tag fun bar. Each year, North American offshore drilling rigs leak about 880,000 gallons of oil into the sea, leaving it for marine wildlife who know nothing about running a profitable energy company. Another shark draws to a close. Coastal tourism in the U.S. continues to grow, leaving millions of naive Americans vulnerable to the graft of beach umbrella renters. Once more, the shark turns back to this place of centered calm.
The ancient Greeks believed that King Poseidon ruled the waters, whereas here at Prosperity Sands, they're ruled by luxury leisure groups international. Many consider the Gulf Stream to be the world's greatest current, but for my money, you can't beat that tourist sheep. To look at the coast is to recognize that the boundary between sea and land is transitory, and that all life on Earth is just a cosmic accident. Underwater world is a fantasia, bustling with color and activity. Thanks to powerful risk assessment software, we now know that this was a wildly idiotic place to build vacation homes. Sometimes even sharks just need to dirty bulk. Benjamin Franklin marveled at how quickly the Gulf Stream allowed him to travel back to America after his many Parisian whoring expeditions. Local resorts have responded to sea level rise by importing 285,000 tons of sand and counting. No one can tell what may be found in a shark's stomach. It's truly the ocean's garbage can. The Gulf Stream is just one of many major currents that mariners have used since time immemorial to circumnavigate the globe. creation of the Titanic was so accurate, 1,500 people died during its maiden voyage.
bull sharks have a habit of gobbling up anything that finds its way into the water. Pete has a new boat, and from the looks of it, there are several features probably not legal for civilian use. So you found me. So what? Uh... Pete, I, I don't know what all this is, but you're scaring us. <laughs> what you gotta be scared about? You a shark? Uh, Pete, I don't want to, but I, I think we need to get the police, maybe the Coast Guard involved. You think I'm crazy? No, no. I'm the most sane man you ever seen. Look, I didn't get it easy. But when some... some shark take everything I got, I'll give her the same chance she gave my boy. None! Now get the f*** off my boat before I kill you too. The f*** I say! <laughs> Hope you got a hunger on! We serve a shark to fair tonight! Pete has built an impressive battleship. But will it be enough to endure the prehistoric might of a mega shark? There, girlie. As you can see, I came prepared today. Oh, I'm gonna fix you up real, Bernie. Gonna hurt you bad.
all out swim a torpedo!
of looking at y'all ugly face. I will chum y'all up. Laissez le bon temps rouler. I suppose there's a lesson to be gleaned here. 
Something about how the increasing commodification of the natural world has placed humans on a collision course with an environmental apocalypse. But this is a basic cable show where people tune in to watch sharks kill people and people kill sharks. So until next fishing season, this is Man Eater.
The shark has somehow survived the multi-gigajoule explosion unscathed. But just like that, she's on to other things. In case you're wondering about me, the network Namby Pambies canceled our program due to depictions of actual death. So I'm now broadcasting online, free from the meddling of censorious busybodies. Hi, my name is Trip Weston. Recently, I produced the television nature series, Man. Over the course of filming, our cameras witnessed unprecedented displays of evolution, strange mutations never before observed by the human eye. When I spoke to a prominent marine biologist, she claimed it was due to Port Clovis's extreme levels of radioactivity and industrial effluence but I couldn't shake the feeling that she was merely trying to play him. What did she mean? And why wasn't she telling me? Then as if the stars had all aligned, the former Q-level security specialist sat down next to me. What he told me would haunt me for the better part of a year and lead me back to Port Clovis on a dangerous journey through dark secrets, government cover-ups, and a clandestine cabal of extraterrestrial elites single-mindedly determined to enforce their will on humankind. Come with me on a quest for the truth. Truth Quest. <laughs> Judging by the bull's behavior, she smells a new creature. If it threatens her apex status, a heated confrontation is inevitable. Predator must act quickly, lest she lose the scent of her prey. The shark works the odor trail with a singular focus. Perhaps she's caught scent of Jormungandr, the world encircling sea serpent of Norse legend. Hustle. The creature has disappeared, probably whisked away by a government boat, lest we capture the beast on video. This city, like so many across our once great country, has become an Agenda 21 cesspool.
brigands and other questers. Whatever it is the shark caught scent of, the secretive Black Ops unit conspicuously called NWO has captured it. What might be their nefarious plan? The markings on this satellite suggest that it belongs to Site P, a top secret military compound, and perhaps the home base of these NWO troops. I suspect there's more where that came from. Anybody 
All these recent oil spills are merely contrived events designed to cripple the Gulf's fishing industry. This is the Plover Island Complex, commonly referred to as Site P. Whatever bizarre and dark depravity lurks within its bowels, we're about to find out. <laughs> 